Welcome to According to John, where the answers come first and the explanations later. Uh, today I'm taking a look at my Lenovo P52 mobile workstation again. I wanted to do some thermal tests on it while undervolting the CPU to see if I can get more performance out of this guy. Technically, in stock form, the cooling system of this laptop can keep the processor above the base clock of 2.6 gigahertz at about 2.7 gigahertz. Uh, and the package power of the CPU is only 30 watts in stock form. You can improve the performance by undervolting it and gain an extra 700 megahertz per core by undervolting it and uninstalling the Microsoft Dynamic Thermal Framework, which actually power limit throttles the laptop. Uh, and then you can get better, better performance. So the test that I did, I ran IDA64 in a couple different configurations. Uh, one is just flat on the desk with about four millimeters of clearance between the desk and the intake, the air intake for the, for the heat sinks. And then I took these slats of wood, which are about a centimeter thick, put those underneath the laptop, something like that, to raise it up even further to give a little bit better airflow for these intake vents. I did that with undervolting enabled, disabled, and also the Microsoft thermal framework on and then uninstalled, disabled. Oh, what other details? I undervolted to negative 165 millivolts. That seemed to be the sweet spot for my computer. And you can uninstall the Microsoft thermal framework inside of the de device manager underneath system devices. You just, you can see it in there. It's kind of towards the top, right click on it, uninstall, it should be good to go. The first run that I did was with no voltage offset, flat on the desk with the thermal framework running. Uh, my machine averaged about 2.73 gigahertz, uh, around 90 C at a 30 watt TDP. Next was no voltage offset, sitting raised up 10 centimeters with the thermal framework running. You can immediately see a slight improvement. CPU frequency jumped around, but it reached as high as 2.93 gigahertz, around 90 C and 33 watt TDP. Here we have no voltage offset yet, flat on the desk with the thermal framework disabled, uninstalled. Without any power limit throttling, the chip in here can run hotter pulling more power, uh, and thus I reached 2.98 gigahertz around 97C at about 38 watts TDP. No voltage offset yet, raised by the slats of wood with the thermal framework uninstalled, and wow, what a difference. 3.1 gigahertz at 97C, 42 watt TDP. We are finally starting to see steady improvements. Now let's start undervolting. Undervolted the machine by negative 165 millivolts, flat on the desktop with the thermal framework uninstalled. We're still seeing thermal throttling, but less power at about 36 watts, running at about 3.4 gigahertz, but still 97 degrees C, which is very, very, very toasty. Still undervolted, no thermal framework driver, but sitting raised on the slats, I can run at about 3.5 gigahertz on all cores at 40 watts TDP. So far, I've only been taxing the cooling system by stressing the CPU. Uh, IDA64 also allows for GPU stress testing, so I decided to do that in tandem with CPU stress testing since uh, the two heat sinks inside the computer are attached to the CPU and the GPU. So I wanted to see how that affected CPU performance by adding even more heat into the system. Keep in mind, uh, the integrated graphics and the discrete graphics, the P3200, were enabled for this next test just to get as much heat into the, the thermal solution as I, as I could. Negative 165 millivolts again, laptop on the blocks and the thermal framework uninstalled. The machine ran at 3.1 gigahertz at 97C with a package power of 40 watts. Sorry, I don't have a full system draw. That would have been really cool to see the difference between um, each of these modes. I just don't have a, a, a watt meter, sorry. Lastly, we have the integrated graphics disabled via the BIOS, so it's just the CPU and the discrete P3200 running. I decided to run Furmark on the GPU just to get it as hot as possible, and then the IDA64 CPU stress test to get the CPU uh, as toasty as I, as I could. So with the integrated graphics disabled, we gained about 100 megahertz sitting at 3.2 gigahertz. 
our temp stayed pretty steady at about 97C and the package TDP is 33 watts. You can see that there are a couple factors that determine the performance on this laptop. I would have hoped the thermal solution in this laptop would have been a little bit more robust and given a little bit better performance given how much space they have available to really build a, a better solution. Uh, if you do a quick YouTube search, you can really see how much the thermal paste affects laptops as, as far as thermal performance. So I'm guessing that has a, quite a bit of an effect on the performance of this. I'd love to replace it on mine, but I can't quite uh, uh, build up the courage to take mine apart yet since it's brand new and I need it for work. But maybe, maybe if you want it bad enough, maybe I'll do it. I did want to note with the Intel Extreme tuning utility, I can get this laptop to run at 4.3 gigahertz with the undervolt of a negative of negative 165 millivolts on all cores, at least within the time limit of the turbo boost until it automatically starts pulling it down because of thermal throttling. But this is important because it, it really does increase the performance of the laptop in productivity tasks where you're running either single threaded operations or things that aren't uh, taxing to the CPU over a long period of time, something that's a very short, short operation that it can keep it turbo to 4.3 gigahertz. Many creative tasks, even like Photoshop, video editing, and like solid modeling, a lot of the tasks are still single threaded. So you can still benefit from having that extended turbo boost range. Granted, when you start doing rendering or encoding uh, uh, and, and loading the system over a long period of time, it will start to throttle again. Uh, but if you have it undervolted, disable that Microsoft framework, uh, thermal framework, you should be able to get around 3.4, 3.5 gigahertz. Pretty steady. Whew. Well, that's all I got for you today. Hit that like button if the thought of 128 gigabytes of RAM just really excites you. See you next time.